Thanks to Tellery for sponsoring SSW TV. G'day guys, I was lucky enough to be at Microsoft headquarters in Seattle and I saw Scrum in action and I got to record a daily Scrum. I never thought I'd be recording a daily Scrum because there's only three questions. What did you do yesterday? What are you doing today? And do you have any roadblocks? Or if you're cool, do you have any impediments? I also have a few other extra tips that I thought pretty much covered everything. Tip one, have your Scrum Master review the sprint progress at the end. Look at the burndowns and other metrics you've got. Tip two, keep a schedule on the wall of all the daily scrum times that you have in your company. Plus, get a recurring appointment in Outlook so no one can forget. Tip three, keep, a, keep to that schedule. Same place, same time, start even if people haven't turned up. Tip four, make sure you always update your tasks before the daily scrum. Otherwise, reports like the burn down aren't going to be very meaningful. Tip five, very important, don't go into detail. As soon as you go into detail, some of the members at the scrum meeting won't be interested. They'll switch off, they'll start thinking about other things. Worse, they'll start checking their emails on their phones. And talking about phones, tip six, no phones, no checking emails, no technology. It's only 15 minutes. Tip seven, use a task board. Physical task boards are great, Electronic ones are even better. But enough talking, let's go and see how the Microsoft team do a real Scrum meeting. As long as I say, it's a TFS Agile team. It's the TFS Agile team, right? Yeah, we're building Agile tools. Cool, and who is the Scrum Master? Hi, I'm the Scrum Master, I'm Aaron Patterson. Hello, Aaron. So, we'll see how the sausage is made, hey? Yeah, I we can uh, introduce ourselves as we go around and stand-up status. So I will uh, start. So yesterday I worked on the team settings client API. Uh, I looked at the unit testing for that feature and talked to Andrew about um, doing some of the... So what we're going to see here is a scrum team doing their daily scrum. This is going to be very interesting because it's actually the Microsoft team building all the scrum tools. It's called the Agile Project Management Team. You'll notice that they're using technology, which uh, if you got with the Scrum purists, the, uh, the people I call the white robes, they wouldn't like technology in a uh, stand-up. What they'd like is everyone huddled around in a circle doing their stand-up. But what you'll see here is a little bit of a queue, a queue behind a um, PC which is projecting. And uh, it's very interesting to see how Microsoft put their daily scrums located in a busy hallway and they do that um, to encourage anyone that's interested in it to stand there and, and listen ideally with uh, tape across their mouth so they're not interrupting. Alright I'm Phil Hodgson I'm one of the devs on the team. Uh, yesterday got the client API or uh, the PCW changes um, checked in for server side and client side so pull that one across. You'll notice as each uh, person switches, uh, they take their turn. Uh, there is a, a little combo on the right hand side of the screen, it's very hard to see, but they switch to their own name. The tasks get highlighted that are theirs. In the ACME branch, we'll look at RIing that up to ALM, but this one's ALM is based on the email from last night. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. Uh, okay, nothing blocking. What do you mean, let's park that? There's a parking lot right there. So yeah. any issues we can't cover uh, during our status update gets put on the parking lot. We park that for later discussion and then uh, we don't consume everyone's time. Uh, to keep the, the stand up short. That's right. All right. Uh, so yesterday uh, finished up the uh, automation. And this is the board, often referred to as the task board. And it's meant to represent a physical board with a sticky notes on it. It's got a few columns to do in progress and done. And during the daily scrum, the team is interested in the middle column. What is in progress? We're going to see the role of the product owner come into play. The product owner in this case is Greg Bohr. Scrum purists would say Greg should not be at this meeting, or if he is at the meeting, he shouldn't be speaking. All right, my name is Greg Bohr. I'm the product owner. Um, I'm, I guess, officially a chicken on this. I have, uh, yesterday, we uh, reviewed our product backlog 
uh, priority on the things that were, didn't make it into the sprint uh, to see what uh, if there were any changes. I'd review that with Valentina. So I that's part of what we'll park. So we'll talk about that afterwards. I want to talk about the, the results of that. Okay. It's with the licensing story, so it's parked. So here we can see Aaron again for the second time. That indicates to the team that the meeting is just about done. He's going to uh, show the burn down and other stats. And then they're finished. Of course, they can hang around if they've got something that they're interested in in the parking lot meeting. We'll uh, make sure that uh, that stays burning. You know. Let's hold it there. It's worth knowing the capacity information on the top right. Devs at capacity, they're pink. And test, they're all okay at green. Now warning, pure scrum teams don't use such figures and they don't need such figures. They don't divide teams up like this. All members of a true scrum team are cross-functional. Yeah. Up first in the parking lot meeting are some priority changes that Greg is going to tell them about. Plus he's going to take a significant item off the sprint backlog. Um, one change that was made based on the review was is that we moved this, uh, the anti-cross scripting site, whatever that thing is, down. Um, because we have this RI date into ALM to get it um, done by September 30. So if this happens after September 30, that's okay. So we want to try to get as much of this done. And it's fascinating to see them using their own agile tools like this. To give you some context, the first version of these were released at the first build conference in 2011 under the name TFS Preview. And the version that they're currently using here is a much later version. And they are not going to be able to complete the admin part of this story. So we both decided there's no reason for us to do it. We should not do it until we all do it together. So this story uh, will be removed from Sprint 20, and we will do it later. The question I will have for the team is, can we pull something? Could we get edit iteration dates back into the Sprint if we remove that? So that's a discussion I want to have at some point. So. Greg's just informed them the item he's taking off the Sprint backlog, and he's going to drag it from the backlog into the left so it goes back onto the main backlog and off the current sprint backlog. Let's hold it there. Greg, the product owner, is changing things on the sprint. Let's discuss later if this is okay or not. So in the background there you can see a list of teams and time. This is the timetable for each scrum team when they'll get to use the projector. This helps limit the daily scrums to the specific 15 minutes because the next team's there waiting in the hall to use the projector. So can I ask a couple of questions before you guys go? Uh, you guys were using the, the brand new tools that uh, are coming in the next version of Visual Studio, uh, sometime maybe 2012 or something. What is the difference between doing a stand-up with these tools and before? Yeah, I would say that the data always stays in sync and TFS is great. It's, it's much easier to visualize the, the data that we have. In the past, we would work with work items, and everyone would go to, to their offices and update hours right there. And now it's much easier to see the data in form of styles and update hours right here. I would say it's a bit as well before you even do a spreadsheet that connects to TFS, and then you need to update stuff. You just go to web page from any machine, and you see the status. Not building the burn down chart off the cube as we make updates even during the stand up, the, the burn down chart updates so we see an accurate picture of things uh, at the end of the stand up uh, right. in terms of where we stand. The other thing is in the uh, sprint planning experience, we get capacity information for the entire team. We can see uh, whether the, we have too much work on the development side or testing side or as an overall team. It's just uh, one indicator that we can look at on a daily basis and see if we're on track. Just another one. From the task board perspective, we've been dog feeding that from sort of the fairly early days and some of the changes that we've made have been as a direct result of us actually trying to make sure that the, the stand-up flows easily. So for example, the filter where you can choose the current um, active person um, was as a direct result of feedback from the teams using the task board during their stand-up. I noticed that you actually update the items during the meeting. Why do you do that during the meeting rather than be prior to the meeting? Sometimes people will forget to do it uh, before the meeting. Uh, sometimes uh, people do do updates to the uh, tasks prior to stand-up. And can I ask some uh, just general best practices for stand-ups? 
we're, I mean, this team has been probably six people bigger at points, and we've always finished within 15 minutes. And I think it's because we just go around, we park it, and then people who want to stay can talk about that stuff. Because early on we had one person updating everyone's kind of status, uh, uh, but then we adopted this concept of going around, and that really works for us. All right, great. That was fantastic watching that. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Do you remember Greg changing PBIs on the sprint mid sprint? Now doing scrum by the book is hard and it's especially hard at Microsoft when you're dealing with multiple teams. But the scrum 2011 guide is crystal clear on this. It says only the development team can change its sprint backlog during a sprint. So Greg theoretically can't even remove an item from the sprint. In practice, if the team agrees, then it's fine. Greg should have explicitly asked the developers if it's okay to remove that PBI. Now, the reason he should ask is if they were midway through that PBI, it affects the team's planning and they need to give him permission. And he definitely should not be asking the team to fit in a new PBI during the sprint. They should continue on finishing the sprint without that extra PBI and when they've finished, they will go to him and ask him for more items and ideally take the next ones off the product backlog. Before you go, I've got a task for you. Go to tv.ssw.com and subscribe to our newsletter. You'll be informed of all upcoming videos. In addition, if you're super keen, I'm all about inspecting and adapting. So send me an email or send me a tweet at Adam Kogan. Cheers. If you enjoyed this video, please thank Telerik. At SSW, we love them. We use them on hundreds of projects. Thanks, Telerik.